Ja, Anders. Yes. Promises. Varsågod. Yes. A, a very weak moment. I promise to take this in English or in Aussie, because we have an Australian among us, but I will take it on my Swinglish. So uh, uh, please bear with me. Uh, and this is uh, actually two presentations. One one minute, one minute long presentation and then the, after that the long presentation. This is the one minute. This is all you have to need about uh, need to know about uh, promises. So in ordinary code, like synchronous code that you goes from top to bottom in a program, you do kind of like this. You declare your variable and you fill it with something and it gets and you can use it. Uh, afterwards, but if this takes very long time, you don't want to wait for this to happen. You want the, the next uh, next other program to execute, and uh, when this slow loading Ajax request is done, you want it to do something like. <laughs> and that's what promises are. This class is now a promise. And uh, if I uh, would uh, uh, do, do uh, it again, I can take another step. And now to the longer presentation. To call back hell and back again with promises. So, most web developers that has done a larger application has been here. We have always we have all had uh, been four callbacks nested inside of each other and try to figure out uh, what, what what's what's happening here and. Why, why is this such a mess? And why is, does JSON uh, warn me about 80 characters long uh, lines of code? So the agenda for this speech is why, what, how? Uh, take on where <laughs> <that was. laughs> And uh, in the end, we can have a question and discussion. But if you have any questions during the talk, feel free to interrupt and I will do my best to uh, answer that. But first, let's talk about promises. So promises in the philosophical way, what is it? I have like kind of identified two promises. We have these promises that uh, I promise you to take the class and drink from it again. Now the promise is no more. I have fulfilled it, and it's no, uh, it uh, has no purpose anymore. And there is this pro uh, promise that I promise you to keep the secret until I die. And that promise uh, will fulfill when I kind of die. But in what state is the promise meanwhile while I'm living? Is it fulfilled? Is it broken? This is, this is like, I am keeping fulfilling the promise until I break it. And that's uh, kind of how uh, promises uh, in, uh, in uh, programming promises uh, works. So, back to the agenda. Why should you use uh, promises? Uh, well, we have uh, the bad things with uh, callbacks, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and 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 pyra the pyramid of doom that makes it very hard to uh, modify the code. Uh, we have callback L and pyramid of doom, and we of course we need to know what these are. And uh, we have a, a 
Ada tu. This is Kovac. Uh, we we are now in Kovac Hell, uh, and the Pyramid of Doom comes from the pyramid that the Kovac uh, makes when you get uh, get too many of them. And this is not the funny place to be. Uh, and another thing that's pretty wrong with this is the code doesn't tell me. It doesn't speak back to me what's the intent of the code. You use the same uh, way to program, but there are two different intents with these two co code uh, blocks. In the first one, we have operations that are dependent on each other. We can't get tweets before we have the user, and to get the user, we need to get the user. But this one, this is totally independent. We need to get the weather, we need to get the stock data, and we need to get a lot of cat images. And this is, maybe, this is a, like a portal, I Google. But this is the way we solve this, because we, someone told us, I don't want the widgets to load separately, I want the whole page to appear at the same time. And we can solve this in some different ways. We can uh, we can uh, have a callback for each, and when it's done, we can uh, use a flag, and uh, then we can continuously look at this flag. If it's done, then we can do, or we can use like callbacks uh, like this. This is the most common, I guess, or use a framework that parallels stuff. But now you have a, a framework that's that's only doing one thing, that's solving one thing for you. And with callbacks, you need to be at the right place at the right time. If you want to do something, you need to be somewhere here, or, have, or put in a function in the callbacks to make a call external. Promises, on the other way, is what they call place and time agnostic. And I can, if I have a promise, I can at any time uh, look at it and uh, see if it's uh, if it's fulfilled or broken. Like now, I can take a sip again. So, what are promises? Well, the difference between the first codes with beer is like the first glass becomes, it, 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 it gets filled with the beer can. The second is that the glass will, is a promise and, when you, and it can give you back the beer. It's not filled with the beer. And uh, uh, at the at the homepage of the of the spec uh, of the promises, it says the promise represents an eventual value returned from a single completion of an operation. So uh, even uh, even when the, the glass when we hadn't started to fill the glass with beer, the glass represented a promise that would. Eventually, it could be become beer, or it could not become beer. And a li the lifetime of a promise, the, the, the promise can be in two states. It can be un either pending, like I said, I, 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 I will keep this secret, and it's pending until it gets resolved. So, when I had the glass, and I and I hadn't started filling it, I could I could from code look at it, and it would say I'm a promise, but I'm pending. 
I'm, I'm in a pending state. When the glass was filled, this, the promise, uh, if I would look at it, it would say, I am resolved. And with resolvement, there, uh, there is, when a, when a promise gets resolved, it can, uh, it can uh, get in either of two states. It can either be fulfilled or filled, or it can be rejected. Like, back on, on a bar at 2 o'clock when the bartender says, no, no more beer for you. Uh, and the terminology here is, uh, we're living in a, in a world where many people uh, discuss whether it should be called rejected or broken, it, should it be fulfilled or should it be called resolved. The spec is pretty uh, clear with this. And this is the first thing you, uh, you see in jQuery that they haven't got uh, really right. Because you, you either reject a promise or resolve it. In the spec you either reject it or fulfill it. And uh, I kind of agree with the spec because resolve a promise to be rejected is uh, kind of my, my chill. Once it has been resolved, it stays in this state until you have, um, uh, until the, the last reference to the object is uh, deleted, or then it the, then it's uh, garbage collected. But as as long as you have a reference to uh, the, to the promise, it will it will stay in the resolved uh, state. So it can't go back to pending or uh, suddenly be fulfilled. You can't say, uh, I, I, will, I, will, I will get my glass now, and then get it. You can't travel from first rejected to fulfilled, or vice versa. Then it becomes a whole new promise, if you want to do things like that. So, the promise of promises. What are, uh, what are those? Uh, of course, this is a kind of new thing in uh, the JavaScript community. It's uh, a couple of years uh, old. But in the computer science world, it's very old. The first uh, thing written about uh, promises is, uh, according to Wikipedia, uh, 1976. So it's like uh, more than older than me. I'm older than. And the, there, are, there are many more promises of promises, but these are the ones uh, uh, I like most. It gives me cleaner code from callback help. My intentions of uh, what my code or the code I'm looking at is, is doing is, uh, is better revealed. And it enables a more decoupled architecture. This is Something that can uh, bite you also, but this, if you, uh, with, uh, with, uh, with powers come responsibility or something like that. Uh, we will look at code later to, uh, to see what I mean uh, with this. Uh, I can mention that with the decoupled architecture, it comes because of when I put the, the can in the glass, you can say it's like I assign it by value. If I uh, if I if I try to read it or try to assign it to another, it, it's copied. It's not uh, referenced. And boy, I want to have one of those copy bureau all the time. But promises are objects, and they are passed by reference. Uh, so what happens when when you have promises that you can uh, send to other places in your application and have them resolve them or that's what I mean with the coupled architecture. And how? Code. Let's see. Let's see some code about promises. 
so we have some pages here. Uh, we should uh, look at this. Uh, it's nothing. Uh, this is the HTML. It's nothing. We have three input boxes. Uh, we have uh, the, some squares. Nothing fancy at all. Uh, and this is to uh, demonstrate. Uh, Three independent uh, uh, calls. I have a long running method that uh, calculates Fibonacci numbers to me. So it will take a little time, not too long time, I, I hope. Uh, instead of doing a fake request to some IX, it was easier to use a Fibonacci. Yeah. And, uh, it will take the values from the input boxes and uh, it will uh, give a promise. Uh, so the variables promise 0, 1, 2, that represents the glass that will sometime fill, be filled with a Fibonacci number or be filled with an error. We don't know. So let's uh, see what happens. Everyone can read. And we're calculating Fibonacci numbers from. Uh, we give uh, three requests 36, 49, 40. And uh, for the one. I tried, kind of tested it, as, but, but for one was uh, my computer just died. So they they were free separated. They were not uh, waiting for each other or anything. Uh, and the, the, this is to demonstrate uh, that you the same thing that you can do in uh, in in ordinary uh, callbacks. So it's nothing, but we will start from the beginning. And in the future, we have we will have this, uh, instead of the uh, logging, we will have uh, these fancy functions here. like this, so it gets more visual for us. Let's step it up. So this is something we can do in uh, ordinary, we can have free IX requests uh, do stuff, uh, and we can have them load widgets independently, that's okay, nothing new here. But if we, if you remember the code block where you have get user, get tweets from user, like dependent stuff. Uh, if you have like a long change of dependencies, get user, get tweets, do something with the tweets, uh, it gets uh, kind of uh, uh, nightmarish at uh, level four. So this code. we focus on this part here. In my, in my opinion, this reads much easier than callbacks inside of each other. And what we do here is we have we take out one number that we feed to the to our method. We get back one promise and when that promise is fulfilled we use the value that that promises is filled with and call and use that number in the next uh, call to the next uh, to get a new Fibonacci number uh, and in, in the end we log the last Fibonacci number so it's a shame we just pipe the uh, the value we, we get back and this will get be fast 
because it's, uh, we start at 6, if uh, we, we start higher, we will get uh, my computer will burn. So 10,946 is not the Fibonacci number of in index, it's, it's not the sixth Fibonacci number. And we could kind of look what's happening if we both log and, gi and get a new Fibonacci number. So the, the first returns eight puts it in the next, returns 21, puts it in, in the next, returns 10,946. And it's kind of clean. It reads very nice, in my opinion. But this you can, this you can uh, do with uh, uh, libraries like uh, Parallel or uh, so let's step it up. Now we have composite promise. You have you have uh, made your portal. You have your weather uh, widget uh, pop up. Your uh, cat's images pop up, uh, and uh, your what, what was it? Weather stock stock market pop up, and uh, and the product owner come comes in and say, I want it to pop up all at the same time. When all the widgets are loaded, I want to the, the page to appear. And that's when you use composite. So, back to basic. We do three parallel uh, re requests for Fibonacci numbers. We, f we feed them to a method that's gi that gives us back a new promise. And that promise will be fulfilled when these three promises is fulfilled. And then we lo lo uh, log it. So let's say, check it out. We got that. And let's do the same here in the future. We just want to see the visual stuff. We don't want to be mathematical here. Yeah. <laughs> and this is not rocket science, uh, but let's step it up once, one more time. We want to have, let's see what's. So, works, yes. So now we can do stuff when the, the uh, widgets are done, but we can do one major thing when all the three things are loaded. But let's step it up again. I hope you remember I told you that when the, the state of a promise has been, uh, when the promise has been resolved, it stays in that state un until no more reference to the object is uh, found. And the, the thing we do here is not, uh, that we, we, fir we fir fir first, uh, well, yes, let's look at it.
So, the promises went from pending and to resolved. Maybe two thousand years later, we 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 go and sh look at the promise again and try to resolve it or make something out of it, and it works because it ha when a promise has been uh, resolved, it stays in that state. So we can reuse it uh, even after it has been resolved, and that's a very powerful thing. Uh, if you think of of what you could do if you could send a resolved promise or an unresolved uh, or a pending promise to widgets all over in your application and have the widgets uh, themselves uh, uh, decide what should I do with this promise that uh, came into me uh, got fulfilled or rejected instead of in this uh, when, when we are in this uh, part of the application uh, deciding what the widget should do. We, we get very decoupled uh, widgets or modules or code sections or whatever. Another uh, very important thing with uh, promises versus uh, callbacks is error handling or exceptions. If you have really tried to do something with error handling with the callbacks, nested uh, four times you know you know you all know it's it's hell uh, and because of this the community has uh, came up with a very weird uh, solutions like if you if you look at node the all the callbacks uh, start with the first uh, argument or the first parameter in the in all functions is the error object so I can't decide what the signature of that, that callback is because it's an error. So what? And that's a, the, the, there is a, um, a quote saying that missing the opportunity of promises is the biggest flaw in Node ever. And uh, they are not uh, even discussing in, you know, on changing it uh, from callbacks with uh, uh, decided signatures and when you start using exception or error, error handling with promises then it, then the jQuery shows its ugly face because it, it doesn't handle it if you throw an error in your code and using jQuery's uh, promises it will it will uh, uh, throw in the, the in the web browser, so you will get a nice error message, or if you use window on error, you will uh, be able to catch it uh, here. So, there are other li uh, libraries. Uh, in this presentation, uh, I have been using jQuery until now, but in this uh, demo, I use a library called Q. There are many others, when, RBSP, uh, yeah, there is a list of uh, libraries, uh, promise libraries. So let's look at this code about exception. So up until here, nothing is uh, new. We still get promises uh, that might uh, uh, hold the Fibonacci number. But in the then we call a function that maybe throw an exception, and we can see it down here. It, it's very the 36 Fibonacci number is equal to that, and if the value is uh, larger or <coughs> equal to that, we throw an error. And this is to uh, to demonstrate uh, where errors are are caught in the code. So all let's see we we use 36, 49 and 40 still. So all these uh, uh, lines will throw an exception. And uh, I have uh, used uh, 
A, B, C, D here to, uh, so we can be able to see what error callback is called. Uh, and the way promises uh, works is that the, the callbacks in this then is associated with that promise, not with, with the promise it creates. And should be empty is something that comes from Q, so don't pay attention to it. But let's see, B and D, value to B. But didn't we say that 36 uh, was also to B? Why, why doesn't it say A? It's because if we would want to catch the exception from this callback, we would have to do like we do in the next time. We should append maybe another then or a fail here. So this callback actually uh, uh, catches exception from this. And there is a, a safeguard we could uh, look at. I put the safeguard in if you use 41. Uh, the first callback uh, checks if it's uh, if it's 41 or higher. Uh, it says your computer will burn if you use this. This is just very simple uh, demonstration of uh, how code uh, with using promises looks like. And uh, the, the nice thing is that you, with the, the revealing intent is that the code that's dependent and the code that's in, independent if the, the promises are independent and if the promises are dependent, the code looks different. And it's good. Because uh, maybe it wasn't I who wrote it. And I don't want to read all the nine callbacks down to uh, eternal hell and find out that, oh, uh, okay, this could be uh, made in parallel. So revealing intent is, is in my opinion, very important uh, to your fellow uh, developers. I would mention uh, also that this is not, as I said, nothing new. It, uh, the computer science uh, folks, uh, very bright people, uh, came up with this uh, in 1976 and it has been in Haskell forever or something. And uh, the future for promises in JavaScript is it's happening right now, right here. The discussions about what, it, what uh, the, the states should be called pending is like uh, if you look at GitHub, the discussions is 13 days old, uh, and uh, so if you if you want to be a part of this and I want to uh, contribute or uh, or if you see something that you don't like, uh, you can make a change because it's happening right now. And uh, a thing that came up just a couple of weeks ago is that they are trying to get. Uh, promises to uh, behave nicely with the uh, monads and uh, that's a whole other topic for another if um, uh, what, what monads are and uh, stuff like that um, yeah so I think I'm yes I am done and we have any questions or discussions or anything? People want to... Are the promise libraries interoperable? 
Is there like a standard they all adhere to? So uh, not, not everyone in my uh, experience, but uh, I know that Q, um, a, a couple of developers ha has the, the Unix philosophy as their religion, like uh, be, uh, be restrictive of what you send out and uh, be uh, take in as much as you can. So. Uh, for instance, the Q library can take can consume jQuery promises and make them Q promises. So they you can if you have jQuery, you can use Q, take in jQuery promises, and then you have error handling. But then you can throw out jQuery. You... Uh, there is a standard de de defined by CommonJS dot uh, that most adhere to, but as you say, there are some differences in, in various frameworks, but like they all have them and they all have like some kind of fail or, or reject method. Uh, so there, there is a standard, but it's yeah. very full. One thing is that the, the standard that uh, promises in, in JavaScript is uh, based upon is a standard called promises slash A, and it's a uh, very small, uh, or it's, it's a proposal. It's a very small proposal and it leaves a lot of stuff open for discussions. Mm -hmm. And there is a guy called Dominic, I think. He's, uh, he's, been, uh, the, he's been called the, the, the promise guy in the world. He and some other uh, people has uh, started a, a proposal called uh, promises slash A+. Uh, and it's on GitHub and it, uh, it's very um, it takes all out all the question marks uh, from the promises a uh, proposal and it also uh, um, give you unit tests that if you write a, a, a promises library it must uh, not break the tests in the proposal and uh, it's in the pr promise a plus uh, Repository, the discussions about monads and all that stuff is uh, coming up. And it's a pretty interesting discussion uh, because it's happening right now. You can see someone wrote something for t two hours ago. Uh, uh, and the, on th in that re repository, you, I think you also can uh, find a, like a list of uh, libraries using uh, that, that is uh, Promise A compatible. I have not uh, any experience with uh, RVSP or WEN. I only use Q and uh, the, uh, the, the so-called promises in jQuery. Um, but uh, Q is... Uh, uh, the thing with Q is that uh, it really tries to focus, uh, it, it really mentioned the, the error handling as a very important thing and uh, when you do error handling and you think about how error handling is, uh, is uh, done in uh, ordinary synchronous code like with try catch and if you, if you try something and it throws an exception you can catch it and then you, if, you, if you can't handle it in that catch you can either throw again and the, the try catch that surrounds that will catch it and that's exactly how promises is. If the, the first promise fails and there is no fail or reject uh, callback, then the last will get it. But if you have uh, someone in the middle, it will take, and you can choose to either handle it or refrow it or just throw the same error and it will travel along the chain. So the the, the similarities between synchronous code and uh, asynchronous code is just syntax, but the mindset, the, the way you think, should be the same. So, any more questions? Just like to point out that there seems to be a, a really uh, nice connection there, not just uh, between moments and promises, like you said, but also between lazy programming and uh, reactive programming. Yeah. Mm. That's a very powerful feature. And, and promises seem to sort of be part, part of that somehow. Like they are related to tasks and all that. Yeah. And uh, lazy and, and reactive sort of seem to be mm, duels. 
the category theoretic sense, the, the thing we are not talking about today with moments and stuff. Yeah, you talk to someone that's not computer science at all. I'm a totally self-learned uh, front-end. Uh, so I, when, they, when people, it's like uh, Crockford uh, say, Monad, monads come with a blessing and a curse. The moment you, you, you get the epiphany that, ah, that's what monads are, yeah. you lose the ability to explain what it is. Indeed. So, yeah, I don't understand them either, but I'm very confident by, by the fact that few people seem to have done this for decades. So, that's nice. Yeah. Well, it's very true that reactive is very close to reactive. I mean, that's reactive JS, something like that. It's great. Right. Yeah, exactly. <coughs> Which I think is the, the Which is the port of Rx for .NET. For .NET, yeah. exactly. Yeah. And I think yeah, you have to, we know what that is. Hmm? Do you know what that is? Reactive .NET. Reactive. Yeah, I, I'll talk to you later. Okay. okay. Sorry. They use that word, I know. I've worked there before, so yeah. I know. Okay. And they use it a lot on the back end. Mm -hmm. So I saw that they have reactive JS, which is the extension. This is really, really cool. And then there's the, the whole point is you can chain stuff into the yeah, drop exactly. stuff. And it's, it's the composability of yeah, it. Yeah, it's really, really good. It's yeah. really good. And I, I have a question about that. Sir. You, um, yes. In jQuery, they had pipe before. And yes. I think it's difficult. Yes, uh, the thing is that in, in 1.5 of jQuery, they say we now have promises and deferreds, uh, and all Ajax uh, calls are promises. But they kind of got it really wrong, so they had a then method and a pipe method, and uh, the pipe method worked like the then method, but uh, with some weird twist. And in the, I think it was 1.5.1, they just assigned then to pipe. So pipe is a, like a alias for then. And it's smart for deprecation. So if you use pipe, uh, switch it to then. Uh, uh, and I can probably sh show you what I mean with, let's see, we have uh, our function. If we take a look at this uh, function here called log result, this is if you imagine that log result is a it's a widget or something. And so instead of sending the actual value into uh, into the, the function, it, you just pass the promise and let the the function itself uh, deal with it. What when when that uh, and it, as it is a reference, it points to this exact same promises. Uh, so when when you fulfill the promise from somewhere else in the application, it just pops up wherever you have done things like this. But it comes with a warning. This is very powerful and it, it might be hard to debug when you resolve something. If The, the thing is that the, uh, the, the spec doesn't uh, say anything about how a promise is becoming resolved, how you fulfill it or how you reject it. jQuery uses a deferred object, that, uh, and the thing is that defer, uh, the, and, uh, the queue also uses uh, deferred. You can you can create your own deferreds and you can resolve it, uh, res resolve that deferreds and all promises uh, or the, the promise that is associated with the deferred will get uh, resolved. And resolvers are also objects. They are also passed by reference. So you can throw deferreds all over your application. And the first stuff that uh, resolves something resolves all the promises. So you can take one resolver there and one resolver here. And if, if this resolves first, then all your promises. And if this resolves later, nothing happens because the promises are already resolved. They can't be resolved again. So it's very powerful, but uh, uh, I think it will bite me someday. But I, what the fuck? <coughs> and uh, bonus, I use this workers, web workers. Mm. <laughs> I used the Fibonacci in a web worker because uh, I had this uh, blocking Fibonacci promise, and this is uh, fucked up JavaScript. Uh, I can only show you now. We create a new deferred, we try finally, and we return 
from the function, but the finally statement will uh, will will trigger even if even when we have exited the function, and that is fucked up. That is really JavaScript what the fuck moment that you can do stuff like that. But I don't uh, don't don't block your. Uh, I couldn't uh, turn off my computer for when I tried uh, Fibonacci 42. So. Any more inputs, questions? Something I have forgotten? I'm still a learner in promises. Forgot about the other half of the beer. <laughs> ah, <yeah>. <laughs> I <laughs> promise to, to drink it up later. <laughs> oh, thank you.